In this demo, I will go over how to create a queue in RabbitMQ from the web management tool and from source code. There are two ways to create a queue in RabbitMQ. This can be done either through the RabbitMQ web management dashboard, which I discussed in a previous demo, as well as through RabbitMQ source code. I'll be using Python to define the sender, which will be creating a queue on the RabbitMQ server in order to send messages to a RabbitMQ consumer or receiver, which will also be programmed in Python. The prerequisites of this demo are to have RabbitMQ installed, the RabbitMQ server running, and to have Python installed as well as having Pika installed for your operating system. Pika is a Python implementation of AMQP, and it stays independent of network support libraries. When logging into the web management dashboard, the prepackaged RabbitMQ underscore management plugin needs to be enabled and an admin user has to be created as the default guest user cannot log into the web management dashboard. I showed how to do this in a previous demo. So let's get started. Here I am, I have two files in Python. I have a sender file and a receiver file. So the sender file is gonna to connect to the RabbitMQ server, create a queue and send messages to the receiver. So if we take a look at the code here on line two, I'm importing Pika. Then on line five, I'm creating a new connection using Pika to the RabbitMQ server. So it's a blocking connection and my server is on local host because RabbitMQ is just running on my local PC. On line six, I'm creating a new connection channel. And on line nine, I'm creating a new queue and it's gonna be called test queue. Now this command, uh, creates a queue if it's not already created, but if it is, it just does not create the queue. On line 12, I'm going to publish a message to the test queue, and I'm going to pass the routing key as test queue. I won't specify an exchange because I'm using just the default fanout exchange for RabbitMQ. And on line 14 for the message body, I'll write RabbitMQ is cool, and then I'll print the status of my send on line 15, and on line 18, I'll close the connection. Now let's go to the receiver code. So once again, much like the sender between lines one to six, I'm just importing Pika and connecting to the RabbitMQ server on my local host. On line nine, I'm also declaring the queue test queue. Now I'm doing this because in the case that the sender was run after the receiver, the receiver will want to declare the test queue. Now, since we'll be running the sender before, the test queue already exists. So this command on line nine, creating the test queue will just get skipped and we'll just connect to a pre-existing test queue, which got created by the sender. On line 11, I'm creating a callback function, which is going to be called anytime that the RabbitMQ test queue has any messages on it. And then on line 12, I'll just be displaying the message from the callback function that's going to be pulling the messages or consuming them from the test queue. On line 14, I'm just going to call this uh, channel dot basic consume, and I'm going to pass the callback function and the queue as test queue. And I'm not going to need or require any acknowledgements from the queue on line 16. So basically, this means that we're just going to keep monitoring the connection asynchronously, the queue, and uh, when we do have a when we do have a message in the test queue, the callback function will be called and it'll just print the message on line 12. And on line 18, I'm just gonna write waiting to get messages from sender. And then I'm gonna start consuming on line 19 on the channel, which is just gonna start the wait for messages on the test queue on the RabbitMQ server. So let's go ahead and see how these run. I'm just gonna go ahead and open a command prompt for both the sender and receiver. I'll run the sender first. And when I go ahead and run the sender, I see sent to RabbitMQ is cool, and then that sender ends. Now the receiver, it says waiting to get messages from sender to exit press control plus C. And then I get received message from sender, RabbitMQ is cool. So because I sent it, I created the queue in the sender, sent the RabbitMQ, RabbitMQ is cool message that got sent to the RabbitMQ server. And then the receiver connected to a RabbitMQ server and pulled that RabbitMQ is cool message from the test queue. So it's working as expected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a queue from the web management dashboard. So I'll go ahead and log into it. Now remember for this, you do need to create another user. You can't use the default guest user because it won't work. So it's just on localhost port 15672 because my RabbitMQ server is running locally. I'll log in with my user. And I'll go to queues. And here, if I scroll down, I could see I have my test queue, which I defined using my command line or my source code. And I could see that that exists. I also have a queue called test queue one. To add a queue, I'm just gonna simply click on um, the name. So I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it uh, test queue three. 
I'm going to set the durability to durable, which means that the queue won't be deleted when RabbitMQ um, basically restarts or if the user logs out. Auto delete, no. And for arguments, I could click on any of these arguments down here. So I'm going to add the message time to live, which basically means if the message wasn't consumed, it'll die. And I'm going to specify the time frame as one day, which is just 864,000 milliseconds. And I'm going to click add queue. So now if I actually want to play around with this queue, I could click on test queue three. And I could see that I have my messages that came in. It's currently zero because I just created it. I have my consumers, my bindings, and so on. And then they're defined so far, but I could go ahead and just publish a very simple message. And I'll type in rabbit MQ is cool once again. And I'll just hit publish message. This is going to publish the message. And if I get the message, I could click on get messages. And that's just going to return all the messages that got sent to the queue. If I scroll up here, I could actually see that I do have one message that came into the queue. And then when I hit get messages, I could see that I have a message with the payload of RabbitMQ is cool. So that's how we could go ahead and create a queue using the RabbitMQ management dashboard and we could send messages that way as well.